Jesus' life. If you could please stand and face the main doors by the baptismal font. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with the Spirit. In the waters of baptism, Carmen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. On the day of her baptism, Carmen put on Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, may she be clothed with glory. On behalf of our parish community here at Epiphany, we extend to Carmen's family the absolute joy of her life, her daughters, Deb and Valerie, her absolute, absolute joy, her grandchildren, Aaron and Justin, our heartfelt sympathy. As you all come here today to lift Carmen, your mom, Nini up to God's loving embrace, know that we have been praying for you and lifting you up, asking God to give you comfort and consolation. So at this time, uh, Deb and uh, Aaron and Justin would like to share some memories with us. So if you please be seated. and I would like to thank each and every one of you for being here today to rejoice in our mother's Easter. I never understood that when dad always talked about that, but 
today, I do. Carmen was born to two hardworking immigrant Italian parents who owned a grocery store. She and her sister lost their beloved papa at a very young age. Even though times were tough, our mother had a real strength of character due to her mother Pauline's influence. Mom attended Catholic schools, which helped define her lifelong strong Catholic faith. <clears throat> Anytime we would ask our mother, I'm sorry, <coughs> to pray for us, she would. Things worked the way God intended. One day, a tall, skinny, blonde boy knocked on my grandmother's door. This young man, the paper boy, was there to collect a due bill. Feisty, spunky, sassy, no barbs held back, Carmen answered the door, took one look at this young man, and slammed the door in his face. After World War II, our mother was reintroduced to this Yankee, lanky, sorry, blonde boy by his younger sister. This couple happily married in 1947. Dad always said, Mom rivaled any and all movie Hollywood stars due to her beauty inside and out. My sister and I were very fortunate to have called this spirited, loving woman our mother. Sorry, Mom, we couldn't find matching outfits to honor your memory. She always dressed us in matching outfits when we were growing up. We will always love and cherish you. Please tell Dad and all the family members that we love and miss them dearly. This is from my dad. You know, my dad always had to have his say. Weep not for our mother. Out of great loss, but weep with joy of her Christian love of family and friends. Her church, family, and friends made a great, meant a great deal to her as it should to all of us. Again, thank you for being here. Um, I'll make my part quick here. You know, my grandmother knew uh, what life was all about. No one left her house with an empty belly without getting a hug or without hearing her say, I love you. She touched the heart and soul of everyone who met her, but none more than all of us. Mine's a little longer, sorry. Epiphany has played such a fundamental part of our family's life. My grandparents were founding members here. My brother and I spent our summers here. I, this is not a reason to cry. Um, for vacation Bible school, and personally, my son was baptized here. We said our final goodbyes to my grandfather here. And today we lay to rest our sassy, beautiful girl, Nini. When I walked away from her window at Nazareth in June, I feared it would be the last. I captured her gaze into my memory forever. We broke the rules to hold hands through the window. Sorry, Gretchen. I simply couldn't bear for half of my heart being on the other side of the glass. I promised I would come as soon as I could with both of my babies. She asked if I would dress them up for her with a glimmer in her eye, and it felt as if we both knew it would be our last expressions of loving goodbyes. I had so much fun coming to Louisville to visit my grandparents in the summer or Christmas times. I'd tell my nanny not to worry about my seatbelt because I only had to cross my hands over my lap and the police would never know. Climbing trees, riding horses, playing in their basement, all memories I will cherish forever. Not only would I have to make sure that my nails and my eyebrows were up to par, <laughs> but keeping my boyfriends or husband away from Nini's flirtatious ways would always make me and everyone else laugh. And I quote, Aaron, you'd better snatch him up before I do and nibble on his ear a little bit. She called my son a little bit. 
And I remember the pride I heard in her voice when I told her his name was to be Callan Ward in honor of my late grandfather. Whenever we would talk on the phone, it would always start with her exclaiming, oh hi, sugar, and it just melted my heart. We would make sassy comments, roll our eyes about whatever story we just replayed, promise to pray for and love one another endlessly. Nini, I do. I love you beyond words. I am terribly sorry you did not get a chance to meet my newborn daughter, Peyton, as we both so hoped you would. You will always be my special little lady, and I hope to continue to make you proud in my life and my children's. And yes, I will always remember to write thank you cards. Come visit me often. I will be listening for you. Thank you all so much for those memories. If you'd please stand, let us pray. <coughs> oh God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy, you may command the name of your servant Carmen to be inscribed in the book of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and on her tongue is kindly counsel. She watches the conduct of her household and eats not her food in idleness. Her children rise up and praise her. Her husband, too, extols her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. Love is not pompous. It is not inflated, and it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So faith, hope, love remain, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, Whatever you did for one of these least brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. 
Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did not do for one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So I want to start with a line from the gospel, welcoming a stranger. When I first arrived here at Epiphany as the new pastor, I was met by this rather nice, welcoming couple, Bill and Carmen Ward. And Bill made the point of, I think I shared with you even at his, at his funeral, that he made a point of bringing me to the center of the church, standing me in the center, got behind me, and I thought, what is going on? He's, you know, and he gets behind me, takes me by the shoulders, and he starts rotating me. He says, Father, we're the only church in town that has seasonal stained glass. <laughs> and Carmen just laughed and laughed and laughed. And that was my welcome. One of my welcomes when I first arrived was those two greeting me welcoming a stranger, a stranger who would serve them as their pastor. And I can say definitely of of Carmen, as I said to her daughters, she was by far one of the most gracious and eloquent women I've ever met. Always a smile, always impeccable in her appearance, always willing to greet you. And with that southern lilt that was just so warm. And I can tell you the one or two times that I walked away from a conversation with her that I thought, she just reprimanded me (laughs) and and had no idea. It was done with such love and such grace. But I also had to say, I'm sorry, this was her seat right here. This was Carmen's seat right here. And if there wasn't an armchair there, someone was going to give her an armchair. That was it. But that was her seat. Ever faithful. Always arrived early. Always arrived early. I think just really to take in the beauty of the seasonal stained glass, to have a moment of quiet with our God, as the rest of the community would gather and begin their greeting of one another and her in the midst of of all of that, saying her hellos and asking, how are you? With great sincerity, how are you in that moment? Now, as we come here today, we do come here with the beauty of this summer day. And actually, this is a really beautiful, pleasant day for August. For August, beautiful, pleasant day with the sun and the the coolness of the air. Only it seems so gracious and so wonderful and warm and hospitable, fitting for this celebration as we come here. And Carmen does want us to celebrate her life, wants us to celebrate her faith. And as as, as Deb shared with us, you know, her faith was a very important part of her life. It it informed who she was and how she directed the course of her life, recognizing the blessings that she received each day and making each day a blessing. And as we come here, we do come to celebrate even 
though we grieve her passing, our hearts are heavy with our sorrow, we can rejoice with her for a life well lived, a faith well witnessed that now enjoys the fullness of that promise that awaits us all eternal life. She has been joined with Bill. I'm probably, she said, Bill, what took you so long to get me here? Um, that might have been one of her first comments, but although very gracious, nonetheless, and happy to be in eternal life. But as we reflect upon the scriptures selected, now, you know, as, we, as uh, Linda and I were meeting with uh, Deborah and, and uh, Valerie, uh, you know, Bill had everything planned, Bill. He had his funeral planned. He had Carmen's funeral planned. They had the notes. They had, you know, all the stuff, where, how, you know, it was going to be. Now, we did have to make a few little tweaks and a few little adjustments, and I'm sure Bill's quite all right with that. But nonetheless, this first reading from the 31st chapter of Proverbs, the blessing of a wife and the, her, the love that she brings and what she does for her husband and the joy that she brings to him. And that was Carmen and Bill. She, she loved him with a passion and a love. You just saw it in their eyes and how they interacted with, with each other. And he, her, he absolutely adored her. And in a very real way, this, this, this scripture does speak to how we experienced Carmen in this life, of, of, of all the goodness and the graciousness that she extended to, to any and all, and that it was very well formed and, and situated in her awareness of God loving her, God blessing her each and every day. And, you know, and it is that love of God that we're reminded of even in our second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians of, of how that love is evident in our lives, that, that true love, that kind of unconditional love that we're called to as Christians, moves beyond any resentments, moves beyond any hurts, moves beyond any disillusionments, but really truly strives for that kindness, that seeking the good for another, that willingness to, to, to recognize how each and every one of us is a child of God and blessed by our God. And that's how Carmen lived her life, lived her life. That's how she lived her life, in that recognition of being present to that moment each day. And then as we then turn to our gospel account from the 25th chapter of Matthew's gospel, we hear this beautiful image that Jesus uses to explain the reign of God and the, the fulfillment of that reign of God, that, that come you who are blessed by my Father, we hear, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What an awesome insight to know that from the very beginning, from the very beginning, God's intent and God's want for us to share in God's eternal life and glory. What a way to inform our lives as people of faith that, that leads us then, in, as Jesus says to, to those that, you know, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. A stranger, you welcomed me. Naked, you clothed me. Ill, you took care of me. In prison, you visited me. All of the ways that we live our faith in that awareness of the great love of our God that is unconditional and all merciful. But the interesting thing that I always find about this gospel is that the righteous always ask the question, Lord, when, when did we give you food when you were hungry or drink when you were thirsty or clothe you when you were naked or visit or welcomed you as a stranger or uh, took care of you when you were sick or visited you when you were in prison? When did we do these things? You know, it's a question that, that makes it very clear for us as Christians that we just do it. We just do it because of God's love. Our response to that love that God shows us so generously. That's how Carmen and Bill lived their lives. That's how Carmen showed her faith was in how she interacted with each and every person. She wasn't preachy. Never was Carmen preachy. 
But she just gave that example again and again of her graciousness, how she showed dignity and care to all people. And as we come here, we're ever mindful that, that this gospel too challenges us as a people of faith, that, that we too must take up that mantle that Carmen carried so beautifully throughout her life. That mantle of faith that informs our daily lives, our daily interactions, knowing that we do so because of the great love that our God shows us and our, our gratitude for that love and our willingness to respond to that love. Carmen, truly a woman of faith, a woman who did not quell from her faith, always willing to share her faith with others, to, to as we were reminded, to lift others up in prayer. We too, as a people of faith, come here to rejoice with her this day, a life well lived, knowing that she has finally come to that inheritance promised her from the foundation of the world, that inheritance of eternal life. She more perfectly now prays for her children and grandchildren. She smiles down upon us all, that beautiful smile that glint in her eye, rejoicing in the eternal life, the eternal love that she now enjoys in heaven with our God. stand. My sisters and brothers, Jesus the Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of God the Father where he intercedes for the church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to his. For Carmen, who has given the promise of eternal life and baptism, may Christ continue to love her into eternal life and grant her perfect love, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the life of quiet generosity which her husband Bill so selfishly gave to her, we pray. Loving God. For our deceased relatives, especially Bill, and for all who have supported and guided us, that we may have the reward of our goodness, we pray. Loving God. For those who have cared for Carmen in the final months of her life, and for those who lovingly supported her family, with prayers and numerous acts of kindness, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For an end to all violence, may all people be treated with respect and all conflicts be resolved peacefully, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all who are working to defeat the Canary virus, that God will give strength to all first responders and health care workers, insight to those researching treatments for cures, and patience to all who face daily challenges because of the disease, we pray. Loving God. 
for the gifts of continued family closeness, even in difficult times, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Lord our God, giver of peace, healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus the Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your eternal kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Carmen, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we proclaim the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. If you'd please kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have sum summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Carmen, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up the flesh he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
If you'll please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Carmen may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Carmen, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Carmen again, enjoying her love and her friendship. Although we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us to gather again in the joy of God's kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ.
into your hands, Father of mercies. We commend our sister Carmen in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Carmen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us, listen to our prayers, open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I just want to again thank uh, Carmen's family for bringing her to this place that was so special to her to allow us to celebrate with you her life and the eternal life that she now knows. Thank you for the, this was such a great act of love for her. So thank you so very much. And our community is so appreciative, even in this pandemic time that you would do this for her and for us. So thank you so very, very much. That being said, just a reminder with the pandemic, please, if you would just lower the kneeler uh, in front of you so we know where to sanitize, we would appreciate that. And so uh, we will conclude our service. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest.